G'day, Alistair here, and in this video we are going to clone this hard drive, um, well this hard drive, onto a brand new, I say brand new, it's kind of semi-used, uh, NVMe SSD, uh, that one. Now it is union memory, um, it's 256 gig, uh, so quite small, but I only paid $19 for it, uh, 19 New Zealand dollars, so uh, not very much at all. And currently there's a um, SATA SSD in there, an old Intel one, which I also got second hand. Now this laptop I bought for a whopping $80 uh, New Zealand dollars, so maybe $50 US thereabouts. It's, uh, yeah, the battery's dead, there's a couple of keys not working, um, it didn't have a hard drive in it. Um, Wi-Fi might be a bit dodgy, and the... Um, it does sometimes suddenly decide it needs to um, hibernate itself because the battery is flat. So, uh, yeah, lots of fun. Um, but, you know, it was very cheap. I, I spent a lot more on getting a 240-watt uh, power supply for it. Uh, AC adapter. Anyway, so what we're going to use, we're going to use Disk Genius because uh, to clone the drive, primar primarily because it's free for personal use and uh, it will allow me to clone a drive, a um, sort of 480 gigabyte drive down to a 256 gigabyte drive. So um, that's just what, what we are going to do. So the first thing we need to do is install this thing. So let's go do that. I'll have to shut this computer down. Uh, I'm just logging into it remotely with uh, Google Remote Desktop. So shut down. And that will probably disconnect. There we go. And okay, that is uh, powered off, and we have a very black screen there. So there we go. Uh, and it's called Dominator. That's the uh, it's an MSI Dominator, 17 inch. Um, it's huge. Anyway, let's go um, put this uh, NVMe drive in. So there is the laptop. I'm just gonna close that, unplug it. Turn it over and pull the back off. Um, something that didn't, didn't come with the laptop was screws. So currently we're using this Intel, and that's quite warm. Uh, well, it's not, eh, no, it's not too bad. Um, Intel 480 gig SSD, and we have here space for this NVMe drive, which I can plug in. But the only hassle is. Um, the screw is way down here, uh, and there's no no other screws available for it. So what I've done is I have thrown some uh, double-sided tape on the back. So let me remove that. So I've removed the backing from the adhesive tape, and slot that in, and push that, and that's stuck no, reasonably well. I'm not sure if that is going to work particularly well, but uh, it'll do for now. And so we might as well throw the back cover back on approximately and throw some, some power in there. Okay. And that is rebooting. So let's get that back up on remote desktop. So if we have a look at the partitions that are on here, there is our new hard drive, and we're going to copy our system disk to that. Let's see any other disk we've got in there. Uh, and I'm going to use Disk Genius. Um, So diskgenius.com slash free. So I've already downloaded and installed it. And we'll run it. Yes. Okay. So we want to do an OS migration. And that's the only other drive we've got in the system. So that'll do. And we've, we're going from 446 gigabytes down to 237. 
but that is fine. And we go start. Yes, all our data is going to be overwritten. And we'll do a hot migration. Okay, so that's going to take not very long. So a total of, uh, well, perhaps four or five minutes. That's the advantage of, of doing um, both uh, flash-based storage, storage devices. I've done this from you know old mechanical hard drives and it, in, the, in the past could have taken me a while. So um, a little bit, bit about this machine. It's not a bad computer. It's got, um, so it's an i7 uh, 7700HQ. So it's the you know, high, high speed um, i7 seventh generation. So four cores, um, a total of eight hardware threads, which is cool. Uh, came, with, came with 16 gig of RAM. So that was pretty good going, but only in a single slot. So I might, um, although getting to that one slot, that has a total of four slots, which is ridiculous for a laptop, but the lot that's in, the slot that the memory is installed in, uh, you have to remove quite a bit to get to it. So I probably won't, uh, <laughs> won't do anything with that. Um, we can see our SSD is reasonably busy. Um, so disk zero. So not maxing out the drive's performance. So the Intel drive will read at about um, 550 megabytes per second, uh, which is about, about the limit of um, a SATA, SATA controller. And this the um, this will, I think it read, reads at about 2 gig a second and write at 1.2 gig a second. So that's cool. So it's it's working and the Wi-Fi is working okay at the moment. So it, it is a bit variable. Um, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, so we'll come back to this when it is done. So this is now very almost done. We've got uh, a few seconds remaining in theory. We'll uh, see if that's actually accurate. And so it's, um, yeah, copying drives. I, I used to use lots of different software uh, for copying uh, boot drives, but a lot of those that software is now commercial. Or oh, their, their free uh, aspect is now expired. So do I want to restart the computer now? And I'm going to say no. Um, so the other other bit of software you can use is uh, Drive XML. I haven't actually didn't actually work in this case because the drive is smaller, uh, and the other possibility is Clonezilla. So complete, and I might just reboot it, and hopefully it will uh, boot from the NVMe drive rather than the SSD or the um, the SATA drive. So let's go restart. It it probably will but uh, I'm not certain that that's the case. And that is restarting, despite what it is displaying on the screen. So that is still booting from our um, SATA drive. Uh, not, you know, E is our, uh, what we want to be C. So I'm gonna shut this down again, and I am I might just hit the F11 key repeatedly, which is the boot menu for this laptop, and select boot from this, and then just delete everything on the uh, SATA drive. So uh, let's go do that. Okay, so let's power this on. Okay, and it's starting up and mashing the uh, F11 key. Okay, and by default it's on the Intel SSD. So we'll uh, swap to that one and boot from that. And um, we'll resume with the remote desktop. Here we go. Hopefully I typed that correctly. I did. We had format disk petitions and we'll verify that there we go our c drive is on the nvme drive now i'd recommend uh, if this is kind of the first time you've done this um just pulling out that um ssd and uh setting it aside just in case but i'm going to pretend i know what i'm doing and i'm just going to go ahead and delete 
a bit of volume. Let me use yes, I know what I'm doing. I can't delete that one, but I can delete that one. Now deleting that volume, I'm going to go into back into Disk Genius. And on the primary drive we have got one partition which how do I delete that? Delete current petition. Uh, yes. Okay, and then I need to go save all. And we're done. So this should now uh, fail to boot from the Intel drive and instead boot from this one. Either that, I'm going to go into the BIOS and adjust um, what drive it boots from. So that is upgrading a SSD to a NVMe drive, or a SATA drive to an NVMe drive. Um, however, uh, I better go ahead and check that that boots into Windows now uh, that I've deleted <laughs> deleted that those uh, extra petitions. So I will uh, go restart, and we will resume shortly. So that booted just fine into Windows. I can come back into create petitions and we can now create a new simple volume and maximize the size and it can be D and that can be used for a STEM folder or something like that. But what I'll probably end up doing is throwing it uh, in another computer as a boot drive. Although I will need to do something about the storage uh, <laughs> situation because uh, 256 gig is a bit small uh, these days. But um, yeah, certainly be big enough for a bit of light gaming. Uh, and that D drive is, it's thinking about that. Um, here we go, D, finally. Okay, so that's the end of the video. So uh, I've uh, migrated the operating system and created a new blank drive. So I kind of reversed the situation um, that I had previously. And I'm hoping that... Uh, that NVMe drive is going to uh, stay stuck down. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, it's easy enough to get to because there are no screws in that in that um, in that laptop holding the back on. But it does clip clip in quite nicely. Okay, so um, yeah, Disk Genius is my current preferred mechanism of uh, upgrading a hard drive, at least for uh, personal use. People have said good things about Drive Image XML as well, but it wouldn't do from a big drive to small drive. Um, you can also use Clonezilla, which you create a boot disk, a USB drive, and throw that in the machine and boot from it, and then you can do whatever fiddling you like. Uh, I did try that, but it failed miserably. I think it failed to create the, um, I used Rufus, Rufus to create the uh, boot USB from the ISO, ISO image. And um, I think it didn't do some files or something like that. So it, although it mostly worked, uh, it didn't actually uh, upgrade the hard drive. Or maybe it just didn't follow the instructions in Clonezilla uh, appropriately. So thanks for watching. I'm Alistair. I hope you found this video useful. I will continue to make other random videos on things that I'm, just little projects that I'm doing. So catch you next time.